Greetings and welcome. I am Just Devore, bringing you what I hope is constructive information on what the system of white supremacy, racism, is, and how it works, as well as what can be done to replace it with the system of justice. The Jackson water crisis will last for years. Racial population dislocation confusion. In this video, we will examine the Jackson, Mississippi water crisis within the context of the global system of white supremacy, racism, and with a counter-racist lens. We will use codified logic to determine how this crisis has affected and will affect victims of racism, white supremacy. We will also look at some racist strategies being utilized to maintain and refine the system of white supremacy in Jackson and Mississippi. For those unfamiliar with the currently ongoing water crisis in Jackson, Mississippi, I will give an overview of the situation. Jackson, Mississippi was founded in the year 1821 on land formerly occupied and controlled by what is now commonly referred to as the Choctaw Nation, non-white people, after the signing of the Treaty of Doak Stand the previous year in 1820. The city was named after Andrew Jackson, the white supremacist race soldier and United States general who will soon become the seventh U.S. president and will be remembered for forcibly removing indigenous people from their ancestral lands so that white settlers would take control. On November 28, 1821, the city of Jackson became the capital of the recently formed state of Mississippi. In 1828, just seven years after the founding of the city of Jackson, on what was then known as the Natchez Trace Trade Route, a private company began to distribute water to the public. The Choctaw Nation was forcibly removed from this area of the land they called Chisha by 1830. By 1888, private companies controlled Jackson's water supply. In 1908, the city of Jackson bought out the private companies, giving the city of Jackson and the state of Mississippi control over the water supply and the distribution of water. This was also the year that the JH Fuel water treatment plant was opened, Jackson at the time. By 1940, the population grew to over 62,000, and by 1980, it reached a peak of just over 202,000 residents. The O.B. Curtis treatment plant was built in 1980 to keep up with the increasing water demands of the city. From 1990 to the year 2000, it is said that nearly 35,000 white residents of Jackson fled the city. Why did this happen? In 1997, residents of Jackson, Mississippi elected their first black mayor, Harvey Johnson Jr. The black residents had made a major impact in the capital city of one of the most notorious white supremacist states in all of the United States concept. After the enslavement of Africans, murder and removal of indigenous people, black codes, Jim Crow, numerous lynchings, and many other strategies used by the white supremacists in power to dominate and control non-white people, especially those classified as black. This was a notable effort by black people to fight back against the system of white supremacy. As the black population continued to rise, white flight was the strategy used in response by suspected racists. When white residents fled the city of Jackson, they took their tax dollars with them. The neighboring counties of Madison and Rankin increased their populations by 35,000 and 42,000 respectively, according to the U.S. Census data from 2000 to 2020. Jackson, Mississippi currently has the highest population of black residents of any U.S. city with a population over 100,000. Jackson is approximately 80% black. In 2006, Jackson added a modern membrane filtering system to its water system. In March 2015, Mayor Tony Yarber declared a state of emergency due to poor road conditions and water main breaks. Mayor Yarber's emergency declaration was not supported by the Jackson City Council. On February 2021, a winter storm hit Jackson with freezing temperatures that led to frozen slush buildup in the Ross Barnett Reservoir where the O.B. Curtis plant, Jackson's primary water treatment facility, filters water from, ultimately leading to over 80 water main breaks. Residents in Jackson were forced to go weeks without water. On March 3rd, 2021, 18 days following the winter storm, it was found that raw water screens at the O.B. Curtis plant were not operating properly because of blockage, resulting in a decrease or lack of water pressure for those residents who were finally able to use some water. In April 2021, 
An electrical fire at the O.B. Curtis plant led to the plant being shut down and residents needing to boil water as a means of filtering it themselves. By August of 2022, nearly a year and a half later, the effort to restore water levels back to full capacity was devastated by the flooding of the Pearl River, which caused the O.B. Curtis treatment facility, which was then running on backup pumps, to stop treatment efforts indefinitely. In October 2022, as the water crisis in Jackson reached a high level of national attention, Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves, suspected racist, blamed the crisis on the mayor of Jackson, Chakwe Antar Lumumba, victim of racism, stating that it was the quote-unquote absolute and total incompetence of the mayor and his administration which caused the water crisis. If you are unfamiliar with Chakwe Antar Lumumba, he is the son of Chakwe Lumumba, former Jackson City Council and mayor who passed away in 2014. The senior Lumumba was a member and served as the second vice president of the Republic of New Africa in the 1970s. The Republic of New Africa was an organized effort to establish an independent black-led nation throughout the southern U.S. states. It moved its headquarters to Jackson after choosing the city to be its capital. The name Lumumba was adopted in honor of Patrice Lumumba, the first elected prime minister of the Democratic Republic of Congo, who was assassinated by suspected white supremacist Belgian government agents. Chakwe Lumumba Sr. and his son, current Jackson Mayor Chakwe Anta Lumumba, elected in June 2017, have an established history of attempting to counter the system of white supremacy. So when the suspected racist governor blamed the mayor and his administration for the water crisis, even though we have covered the struggle mayors prior had in attempting to address problems with Jackson's water systems, it appears that Governor Reeves was using the racist strategy of victim blaming. In politics, one of the major areas of people's activity mentioned in the code, U.S. states provide extra funding needed to supply the needs of counties and cities under the state's jurisdiction, if needed. Jackson's water main problems were not just a Jackson problem, but a Mississippi problem. A problem that went ignored for years. But why? Mind you, the victim blaming strategy worked because in November 2022, the control of the city's water supply was taken away from the mayor and the city council and placed under U.S. federal control. But again, I ask, why had the problem been ignored for so long? Given the history of white flight, which describes the racist strategy of when people who classify themselves as white relocate when non-white people move into areas they live and or work, taking tax dollars and other resources with them, starving the area of needed resources that it needs not just to expand, but to simply maintain, often leads to deterioration and dilapidation if the area is unable to get the resources it needs. Eventually, the conditions become so unbearable that the non-white people who increasingly occupied the area began to relocate for better survival and living conditions. This strategy is referred to in the code book as racial population dislocation confusion. I suspect that this is what has happened and is happening in Jackson, Mississippi. Suspected white supremacists have been withholding from the city of Jackson the resources it had been needing. I also suspect that certain city officials have been working from the inside to keep the problem from being solved before it became the crisis that it has become. Now that this crisis has become the crisis that it's become, what will become of the black people who make up nearly 80% of Jackson's 150,000 population? Will they now relocate to counties surrounding Hines County, as those so-called white people did who fled in the 1990s and 2000s? If this happens, it is likely that suspected races will then move back to Jackson and gentrify the area so that the cost of living rises so high that it drives out much of the remaining black population, resulting in white people taking back the city once again. But what do I know? I'm just a victim of racism. Just another vore. What is the likelihood of these racist strategies and tactics bringing about the aforementioned results? At the end of January 2023, it was announced that the water crisis in Jackson would likely have adverse effects for at least another 10 years to come. Sounds a lot like Flint, Michigan, doesn't it? What are your thoughts on how the system of white supremacy plays a role in the water crisis in Jackson, Mississippi? Feel free to leave your questions, comments, and concerns. 
For more information about the purpose and goals of this channel, as well as some basic definitions of words and terms we use in reference to our work, I have included a link below to a video containing this information. If you would like an even better understanding of the code and how it works, please visit ProduceJustice.com to order the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. There are many constructive suggestions for ending the system of white supremacy, and Mr. Fuller's code book and its word guide act as guides to getting and keeping on code. If you feel this content is constructive and worth your time and energy, please subscribe and share to support the making of more content in the future. Much appreciation to all the Vores already subscribed. I am just a Vore, and I am still learning. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Let me say something that gets to the very crux of the matter, and this may be offensive for some to hear who are not on the side that we're on. White people, we have been the problem for 400 yeah. years. Say that again. Let me say it one more time for those of you who didn't hear me. White people, we have been the problem for 400 years. Yeah.